Alrighty, and with that, we are going to throw it over to Munch Koopas running Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Take it away. All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm Muncha. Joining me is Uranium Anchor for moral support. Yes, indeed. Also, also joining us is uh, Nick Wozniak, uh, principal artist of Yacht Club Games. Woz, how you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great. Excellent. <laughs> well, we're going to play some custom night. So real quick, uh, you know, this is my custom night from the Amiibo. I have the body swap setting ready, so there's our donation incentive. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Yes, I'm sure I want to play custom night. And if we're ready on the timer, I can give us a countdown and we can go. All right. In three, two... One, go. All right, so I'm actually using three different controllers in this. Three if you count the Wii mode anyway. But I'm playing on Wii U, so I also switch items with the gamepad while I play with the classic Pro Controller. Uh, this item's the Infinite Dagger. I'm going to be using it a lot, so if anybody in the audience just wants to pretend that they're on a roller coaster whenever I use that item, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, Waz, you want to talk about Custom Night a little bit? What was it like making that after making the original Shovel of Hope campaign? Yeah, so Custom Night is sort of a way for us to do all kinds of weird, crazy stuff. Um, you'll see that, like, Shovel Knight is bouncing around like he's using the bomb burst that Plague Knight has. Um, he's using this thing called the Infinite Dagger to get everywhere he needs to go. He's using this, like, he just used a flare wand, the Flareo wand, to, to do a big, giant explosion. It's, like, it's hard to track because you're using, like, it looks like you're already using, like, eight different relics. Um, and uh, they all do a bunch of really wild things. Um, it was really fun to make this kind of thing because it was like a way for us to just like go crazy and try new things and try like, hey, let's make it so that like Shovel Knight can just fly across the screen forever. Um, why not? <laughs> um, you're doing a skip that the Plague Knight usually does. That's yeah, cool. that's, that's I haven't actually seen this run. It's the, the only it's glitch fun. in the game that's good for speed running anyway. I made sure of that, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Munchy Koopas does, does uh, testing for us, too. He left uh, on, on Thursday morning to, to go out and do this, and we were... Uh, just, no. like, he left the office and just went over here to, to basically speedrun the game again. Oh, so fast. Great. <laughs> A little trouble with Black Knight, but eh. Hey. I'm Do you sleepy. like doing the, the, the custom run more than the, the traditional run? Uh, I like parts of it. The bomb burst and the shovel drop off of stuff is really, really fun. And I, I don't know why it's so fast, but it, I, I, I'm going to thank Ian when I return on Tuesday because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It was, it was fun putting him in those weird poses. There's, he has the bomb burst, and if you, if you let it go all the way through, like you're, you're speeding through really fast, but like he's diving forward as his, with his shovel forward, and he's like spinning through the air. Um, it was fun animating those weird poses. Yeah, I was gonna ask, what's uh, some of your favorite like animations you have done for Shovel Knight? Like what's, what's a handful of the best? Some of them are in the, um, in the Amiibo, the, like, like, like the custom knight. Um, I like his, his pose when he's doing the infinite dagger because it just looks, it looks like he's being like pulled through the air really hard. Um, I really like the, uh, the other dagger. I don't know if you ever use it, but the one, the rising dagger. Yeah. Um, it's hard for me to remember all the names because there's, there's, there's like 30 relics, right? I forget how the, the, the final count of relics that you get from unlocking everything, but there's a ton. Um, yeah, but some of them are in this. I like the the animation of him going through the, the flip door, but mostly I like the animation of Plague Knight going through that same flip door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oop, Great. got hit by the rat. Oh. Um, what do I need? I don't need any item here. Aw. If you jump right, you don't get hit by the Blitz Steed, but hey, <laughs> stuff happens. How dare you not have a perfect run. And let it rip. Yeah, this really just nullifies a lot of the challenges that you'll find in normal Shovel Knight. That's half the fun, though. Yeah, definitely. I love games that you can break the rules and, and change everything that's happening. Don't know what's going on with me today. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> that yeah, was King Knight. Was great, good job. They're like the only person in this room who can actually see you manipulating the Wii U uh, tablet. <laughs> uh, it's a bit of a shame. Yeah, having to do that it. is crazy. Oh, it's here somewhere, I promise. 
All right, next up is the Lich Yard. Again, I'm just going to be using a lot more of the uh, Infinite Dagger and like bomb bursting through rooms going at lightning speed. Uh, AJ, do we have any donations we could read off briefly? Uh, we absolutely do. We actually have that train has left the station. We got a bunch of $5 donations came in here. Uh, Undying Lego says Choo Choo. Nathan Matthew says Choo Choo, my dudes and dudesettes. Odd Craig X also says Woo Woo. And Dirty Tiger X says $5 train, let's go. So you guys want to keep that train going, get those donations coming in. So have we explained what this Shovel Knight is, what, what the Custom Knight is? Uh, I don't think we have Basically, yet. The way that you activate this is by, when you have the Amiibo, um, you plug it into your, your, he's using the Wii U for the gamepad, but you, it works on the um, 3DS and the Switch as well. Um, you activate Custom Knight, and now every gem that you get adds a little bit of experience points to Shovel Knight. Um, and there's a menu you're not seeing because it's slow, but it lets you customize the look and the color, and uh, it gives you a bunch of new relics for Shovel Knight. Also, this this cool, awesome shadow trail that's on Shovel Knight right now is a visual flare that you unlock as well. Yeah, um, I do the run like with a max level levels. amiibo. You do what? Oh, I do the run with a fully leveled amiibo, so I have everything right, from the beginning. Right, right, oh, right. you have everything. You have all the costumes. Um, there's every there's a ton of customizations. A lot of them are, are visual. Um, a lot of them are really gameplay changing. Um, as you can see, this, this Bomberus is one of the one of the better ones. Um, yeah, so it's it's something that comes with the amiibo. Nicely done. All right, the next thing coming up is there's a dream sequence that uh, you normally are supposed to catch Shield Knight in. Uh, in a regular run of Shovel Knight, I would just die during this part because it's faster to do so. Uh, since Custom Knight has so much health, I can't do that. So it's actually faster for me to just hang out along the top of the screen to kind of catch her as soon as possible. Uh, so we do have time for a couple more donations, if we have any. Oh, absolutely. We have a $50 donation from F Patches27. It says, hello, Infinidagger. <laughs> Got a couple of more uh, donation train donations here. $25 from Anonymous says, this is a $5 train with five carriages. Choo choo. Another $5 Anonymous donation says, not really morning here, but still in the train. Ah. I'm supposed to jump and bomb burst off screen, and sometimes it doesn't want me to jump. I'm sorry. <laughs> will you get another chance? <laughs> I will. I will get several more chances. All right, coming up next is Explodatorium, which has a few global cycles. So what that means is that once I enter the level, stuff in the level starts moving. It doesn't matter as much for Custom Night, but it's still something to be aware of. Whee! <laughs> so I have a question for the two of you. What's their favorite music? Um, Clockwork Tower for me. Oh, music. Oh, I can't. I don't know if I can say. I really like the battle music with um, the uh, the wandering encounter guys. It's really fun. Uh, that 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 song is. It's called um, Hyper Camelot. It has lyrics <laughs> that that Jake wrote, and they're really amazing. But uh, they're not in the game, obviously. Watching you do this is like watching it. It's like a glitch run almost. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Oh no. Come on. So getting the infinite daggers like at the start of rooms is actually pretty difficult because it's there's like a certain time frame where it um, your input is just like not it's not that it's not red, it's just that it's mistimed for whatever reason. I think when we were first developing this, the idea of a fully customizable knight was something that was like extremely exciting to us. We had some ideas for doing costumes, obviously, and like we wanted the amiibo to be functionally cool and more than just like a visual thing. And we had a bunch of ideas coming around for 
like how we could do that. Um, oh, getting pulled out of the air. Yeah, if you go low enough, you don't get hit right there. And then the rest of the room is a breeze. Not today, though. That's all right. Um, but yeah, I think when, when we, we kind of settled on this idea of like a, a slowly growing night that had 50 levels, it was like, there's a lot of content. We, <laughs> we, have, we have so many other things to do. Um, but we just really gravitated towards this idea of like really customizing what your character feels like and how he feels when um, you can bring it over to your friend's house and like your build is like way different than theirs and like you can play it in two player mode and so you can actually play this multiplayer. I don't know if it, I don't know if it would be any faster. I kind of doubt it, but you can play with two custom knights playing with with each other and it's a lot of fun. To, because a lot of those those relics like mess with each other. Like you know like you can use those to to help each other or like hinder each other. And, yeah, uh, the, the fishing rod will grab you and throw you. The dagger, you can yeah. push people into pits and stuff, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. Charge blade hits each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we recently have been testing to finish um, the last bits of Shovel Knight King cards, and part of that whole bundle is the Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Uh, is we had to play a lot of the legacy content, a lot of the content that was released previous to. Um, wow, that was scary. <laughs> <laughs> previous to this was um, we had to like test it and go through it again, and so I played a bunch of the game co-op. And playing a game, the game co-op again, just like even vanilla, just not custom night. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's fun to like use the fishing rod to pull each other into pits. It's fun to like to ha like one person breaks the checkpoint and you just both groan <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because then you have to like cooperate extra hard uh, and you end up killing each other and going back ten minutes in progress. And, My favorite yeah. thing is. Uh... What is it? Of pogoing off of each other, or inadvertently spiking your friend into a pit. Inadvertently, <laughs> yeah, sure. Inadvertently, right? <laughs> it depends. Are you playing with Mike? In which case, it's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think me and Alec did a playthrough. We were just like yelling at each other the entire time. We couldn't get past Lost City because <laughs> so we like we broke two checkpoints in a row, then like trolled each other too hard, and both of us fell into the lava. <laughs> yeah, the fish you're just doing cool. so many things right now. It's kind of crazy. Like the amount of inputs that you're doing, it's like hard to keep track of everything. It's hard to like commentate on that, all of what you're doing. You're telling me that's why you're here. <laughs> that's kind of wild. All right. What what is the hardest part of this run? Um. Is this keeping track of buttons or. Ah, this. <laughs> this gob cano right there. That's honestly, that, that is one of the harder parts of the run for some reason for me. Um, I think it's honestly just keeping track of what relic you need to use when. Because there's just so many. You can use Infinite Dagger here a bunch, but it might just be faster to do this. Anyway. Do you ever switch with the shoulder buttons? buttons? Uh, I do occasionally, but a lot of it is the gamepad. Bye, Treasure Knight. <laughs> the orbs are really effective, if you hadn't noticed. Yeah, that's sort of a boss killer. <laughs> yeah. I blinked. Can you do it again? No. <laughs> like the, honestly, the hardest thing for me is um, it, I'm so used to the relic order from regular Shovel Knight that I get confused when things aren't in the same spot they are when I'm trying to quick swap with the shoulder buttons. Um, yeah, I see that. So it, a lot of the times I end up having to look down while I'm platforming and be like, oh yeah, that item. Like right now. <laughs> oh, this audio is really great. I really enjoy this song. I mean, Jake is great because like he's he's really great at what he does. <laughs> he's like better than he's better at his job than like I am at mine. And and in his, hearing his work on this game and his, on the game's following has been really a huge joy. Um, 
Yeah, I'm excited for people to hear all the other stuff he's been doing. Yeah, I can't wait. There's a ton. I, I always forget that, like, because we, we've been working um, on game cards for so long that, like, it's, sorry, it's just it's so stressful to watch you do this <laughs> and talk about stuff at the same time. I gotta like look away. Um, uh, but yeah, we've been working on the game for so long that I feel like uh, you know, it's just like the part of common knowledge in my in my brain. Like, oh yeah, this is what like you know the airship song sounds like, but like no one's ever heard that before. So people are really excited. I hope <laughs> I'm excited for people to hear it. I'm excited for everybody to be able to talk about the same stuff. Oh my god. Oh my god. Alright, if you're too early there, you get hit by the fireball. If you're too late there, you also get hit by the fireball. So the fact that I bonked the wall was actually a blessing. <laughs> wow, wow. Good job. That was really... Mm. Scary. Eh. <laughs> Not my best, but it'll do. All right, another dream sequence coming up. So if we have more donations, now is the time. We got a couple here. We got Earl Nine donated fifty dollars. Says five dollar train with some extra cars. We've got a twenty five dollar donation from Must Must Be Tuesday Music. Said thank you, Munch Koopas, for all your help coordinating my run with Megma Attack. You were so calm and supportive and made everything so much easier. Wishing the best of luck on your run. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming and performing. The piano was great last night. And we also got a $10 from Cup O Joe. Shout out to Waz and the Yacht Club crew for making such a great game series. And of course, GDQ for making these great events happen. Hey, Cup O Joe. Lastly, a $10 donation from Anonymous says, two seats on the train, please. All right, next up is Stranded Ship, which is actually one of my favorite levels. Um, for whatever reason, in like every category, this level ends up being pretty technical. Um, and it has a lot of really fun tricks that just make you feel like good at platforming, which doesn't happen very often. You're not going to do the Hall of Champs, really? It's optional. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Speedrunning, yeah. I'm not at work, Waz. I don't have to do everything today. <laughs> yeah, scrub through the whole game. Please. <laughs> what if it crashes? It's an old build. It'll, It'll never crash. <laughs> Ooh. over all of these bird statues, right? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke too soon. No, it's okay. The, <laughs> the downfall is uh, your bomb burst takes a little bit to charge, and unfortunately, I had mistimed my button presses. Come on. There we go. Should add the pogo back into Plague Knight somehow. It's, 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 really, it's really cool to see the, the charge burst into the bounce. It's really a lot of fun. I'm gonna make more characters be able to do that. So let's get to uh, about two rooms worth. <laughs> Who needs ladders? <laughs> Not me. Oh, jeez. Didn't even need any specials. That's a vanilla strategy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, so for anyone unfamiliar with like how I got started with Shovel Knight, I got started running low percent, which is the category you run with no upgrades. So there's there's probably faster boss boss kills using the items. I just I am faster without them personally, in most cases. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Yeah, this thing you just destroy shut with Polar Knight, it's like... You're, you're not doing anything more than, like, what normal people are capable of. You're just, like, pressing the buttons really fast. Yep. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Alright, time for my favorite music. This level also has a really giant skip, which hopefully I didn't jinx by, you know, telling you that. So, look forward <laughs> to that. Oh, I need this. During the time we were developing this, it was after Plague of Shadows. So a lot of the abilities you see come from Plague of Shadows. He has the um, that potion that makes him run fast, has the big flamey um, sort of shield using to get through bricks. Uh, the bomb burst obviously comes from Plague Knight. Um, the Flareo wand is sort of an adaptation of, of Plague Knight's cluster bomb attack. So. Um, it definitely has like a, a lot of like Plague Knight flavor to it. I wonder if he had done the, the Amiibo mm. like now, what the relics would look like. You know, they probably have some spinning abilities or some of the um, maybe you toss out a rat bomb or something. Like some of the the chain bite relics might make themselves in there. Maybe the uh, Spectre Knight relic would go in there. I don't know. There we wow. go. <laughs> Not even using the infinite dagger, wow. Alright, well I unfortunately jinxed the big skip, but that's okay. We're still going. <laughs> still very impressive. Yeah, Is I that think... something you can do as Plague Knight as well, or do you need the, the bounce to get through that? Uh, no, you can do that with Plague Knight. It's a little bit slower, but you can do it. Cool. Yeah. Um, as for like the one Spectre Knight relic that... Like, this uh, Custom Knight kind of foreshadowed is the, like, Shadow Knight thing. I actually will be using that in the boss fight coming up here. Oh, yeah, the one where you project yourself forward. Yeah. Hold on, we have time for, like, one donation while I do this auto-scroller. Sure thing, and by the power of the Shovel Knight amiibo, AJ's actually been relieved, so hi, I'm Jay hops uh, But we have $5 from DJ Does Twitch 192 says, putting my train donation towards the Super Punch-Out blindfolded race. Early morning train hype. We also have a $50 donation from Anonymous. So, so glad to see GDQ supporting Able Gamers and just as excited to spend my weekend watching runs. Hooray! Wow, so technical. <laughs> So one of the things that we did is try to make sure that all of the relics that you're using are like a thing. Um, so like they're not like an ability or like a like a icon or whatever. Like it's like a thing that you're using. And so um, you'll see that the, the really the tiny little shadow relic that he's using right now is a little like all of Shovel Knight. Um, I, we had a hard time trying to figure out like the items for what all these things are. Some of them are really, really obvious, like the Infinite Dagger is a dagger with an infinity symbol on it. But the icon for the, the thing that projects Shovel Knight forward, I was, we were trying to figure out what it was, and I just did like a little shadow doll. Um, so I imagine that he's actually like holding a little like booty doll of himself when using that ability. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's just my own head cannon. Move through the flying machine now. The I think the longest level actually in terms of number of rooms. And here we go. I'm right up to that hover meanie like it's nothing. You guys are jerks. They <laughs> are jerks. What's their name? <laughs> Get that jerk out of the way. It's always good to kill those guys first. If you guys aren't familiar with the game, those guys push you around. They have, they're called the hover meanies because they jump up in your face and they turn their propellers at you and, and blow you backwards. And it's, whoa. <laughs> it's really difficult to deal with. All right, I was hoping for a big magic drop from that guy, but I didn't get one. That's okay, though. How many hours of practice do you have in Shovel Knight total, Cameron? Uh, 
Are we counting work or not? Yes, definitely. Uh, it, it has to be close to 10,000 at this point, if not more. Like, most of that is on the original Shovel Knight campaign. And then, like, a good portion of Plague and a bit of Custom Knight. Not so much Spectre. But <laughs> many, okay. many hours. Probably many of uh, King of Cards as well, being that that's what we've been working on. Yeah. How many of that is is just Custom Knight, though? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, like, Run 200, 300? Definitely more than I've played it. <laughs> more than probably anybody should, but you know what? It's fun. Ow, what a mean rat. Wow. That's just the normal Shovel Knight way to get through it, right? And yeah, there's, <laughs> that is the normal Shovel Knight way with the Propeller Dagger. There's other ways, but I'm just more familiar with that way. Too early. Cool. So you can use, so you can use damaging. If you damage the enemy, they can't hurt you. That strategy is all about like making sure that you're putting out more damage at the same time that you're putting out damage, right? Well done. Thank you. He unfortunately flew to the right because I hit him too early, but hey, saved it with the rest of the relics. I guess that's the hard thing for me too, is also remembering like, oh yeah, you have stuff. Use the stuff. <laughs> totally. Ah, all right. Would everyone like to count with me? This is the third dream, and uh, Shield Knight will appear after 13 spears are thrown by these nice gentlemen. One, two, three, four, four five, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen. Hooray, we did it. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> No, I don't no, want to save my progress. I've never heard of those spear guys are like a timer for you. It's great. I'm very thankful for that too. The other dreams, I just kind of have to watch the screen and be like, all right, the enemies are kind of in the right spot. Okay, go now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Catherine can uh, donate or can actually count a little bit better than us because she donated fifteen dollars. So gotta try for those Hollow Knight prizes. To see that blindfolded race. Thank you, Catherine. Two five two. Oh. Already at the tower. This is crazy. I am. How much faster is this run than the normal uh, normal shovel knight? Uh, about six minutes. Oh yeah, how's that uh, save versus kill the knights incentive doing? Oh yeah, that incentive's coming up uh, at the end of the next level. Well, right now it's going to take some deep pockets to leave the knights because save the knights is winning at seven hundred and forty-six dollars and fifty cents, and leave the knights a meager ten. But if you really want to leave them behind, you can make it happen. We also have a $100 donation from Ash9196. It says, greetings from Norway. I would really like to see that super punch out blindfolded race. So I'm donating in hopes of reaching that incentive. Is this the old fashioned way? <laughs> we can go over that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, the hover meanie was nice. There's one hover meanie in that room for everyone that missed it. Yeah, he can deter you a little bit. Oh. 
<laughs> this guy has phases and stuff. Does he? <laughs> well, that was oh kind of one. Oh my goodness. He kind of had a phase. It's just a phase, Waz. <laughs> We have time for a few more donations. Sure thing. Lat Mackie chips in a fiver and says, Thank you, Muncha, for making GDQs awesome for runners and everyone. Let's have $5 from Canadian Insomniac. First time I've caught a GDQ live. Been watching on YouTube for the last two months, and I'm hooked. Since I got paid yesterday, I couldn't not donate to such a great cause. Best of luck to all the runners and regards from the icy north. Another five dollars from Hard Prey Thirty Two, who's uh, adding to that donation train. Just says choo choo. Are there any more scary points in the run that you're worried about coming up, Cameron? Yes, and I just passed it. Yeah, that is that is one of them. I guess anywhere with the pit, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if like, Shovel Knight still had the same like low pit um, detection that uh, Plague Knight and Spectre Knight have, uh, this category would be a little bit easier. Um, it's like there's sometimes where I'll try and do stuff because thinking I'm Plague Knight because I have the burst jump and then I die to a pit and I'm like, why? Definitely, yeah. So what Cameron's referring to is that we we have the the bottom of the screen, the pit, you know is a typical death pit. But for Plague Knight and for Spectre Knight, because they have abilities that let them pop out of the uh, the bottom of the screen, like, you know, Spectre Knight can wall climb and Plague Knight can obviously bomb bomb burst. Um, you give the player a little bit more leeway so that you don't, like, immediately die when touching that, that death pit. Um, you have a, a tile or two. And uh, it makes a huge difference when you're <laughs> when you're going through it. Obviously, when you're bomb bursting through it. Uh, this camera just described. You just jumped over all those blocks before they spawned in. I did. That's how you were able to climb over that, <laughs> that impenetrable wall. <laughs> I like it. I leave exactly. the blocks in peace. <laughs> they were here first. <laughs> you have to respect the block. All right, time for boss rush. So after I kill these eight bosses, then you tell me if I'm saving them or killing them. I'm pretty sure I'm killing them. Yeah, unless something miraculous happens, you are going to be saving the knights, actually. I was not expecting Tinker Knight first, so I was not prepared. <laughs> the order is completely random, aside from um, Polar Knight will always be within the first three. Does it matter much, or...? Um, it matters more for like regular any percent because there's certain orders uh, that you don't want to get just because of your uh, magic amounts. Uh, the same is still true for Shovel, but less so just because you have so much more in general. Force Polar to be in the first few sets because he's the only one that can create um, instant kill spikes on the ground, and we found as we were playing it that if you got to, you beat the entire order from a quarter, and he's like the seventh or eighth guy, um, and you died to spikes randomly, it felt really, really terrible. So we want to make sure that we get the terrible feelings out of the way really fast. <laughs> yeah. You may have noticed just now that uh, Polar Knight's snowball didn't hit me at the start of the fight. You're actually immune to damage from the bosses for a few seconds uh, for that exact same reason at the start of each fight. I think you can also go through Treasure Knight's anchor, right? Yes. Not his dash, not his dash follow-up, just the initial attack. Like, man, it's so random, it's hard to... It's hard for me to imagine trying to optimize that fight. You do that really well. I 
think it was reading my double jump when I didn't want it to be. Anyway, he's dead. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> the chest didn't even hit the ground. <laughs> players you can kind of knock Specknight back and forth because you can see like he reacts to your hit and so it's fun to like knock him to the left, knock him to the right, knock him to the left and see how far you can get with, with Specknight Volleyball. Or oh, bouncing against the wall is fun too. <laughs> A little harder. <laughs> and you are definitely going to be saving those nights. All right. Thanks, Hobbs. You can see the real canon, uh, <laughs> what really happened when you play like a shadow. I like how the smallest guy was the one holding the rest of them up. Don't worry, physics are fine. <laughs> it's magic. We got a special $20 donation from Shawnee Face who says, Waz to the future! <laughs> <laughs> Shawnee Face is her, our game designer and director. Yeah, <laughs> Hi, Sean. <laughs> Good morning, dude. And 3D chipped in five for the donation train, said Choo Choo. And Yin Yang 226 said, uh, with five dollars, said Choo Choo, but spelled a little bit differently. <laughs> Trying to keep up with you. <laughs> Oops. Frame perfect pause. No. What are you going to do? <laughs> So stressful. <laughs> Luckily, I got her down to one health. I actually forgot to switch to the Chaos Sphere after the start. <laughs> so it all worked out. <laughs> good, good, good. All right, now if I catch Shield Knight in a very specific spot here, I'll get a good setup where I'll be one pixel onto this platform on the right. Perfect. So that sets up for this last boss. Get ready on time, by the way. Time is when I deal the final hit to this boss. That's unusual. Time. Wow. Good job. All right. Well, that was Shovel Knight Custom Knight Any Percent. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, Waz, for joining us. Thank you, Uranium Anchor. Yeah, Thank you, great. Shovel Knight Amiibo. The strong but silent type. <laughs> oh, I didn't MVP. Even see you there. <laughs> All right, but uh, that will do it for me, so be sure to stay tuned for more awesome speedruns. Bye, everybody. See you later. Thanks for having me. Good. Thank you, Muncha, for the excellent run. I'm going to read a few donations before we go to some ads here. Got a $15 donation from Shy, no comment. Dark Astora dropped in 20 with no comment. Dante, $150, $5 with no comment. $10 from Anonymous. And Dr. Goldfire, 205 with another $25 donation. Thank you all so much. And I'm going to go ahead and play some ads now. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you.
Welcome back from the break, everybody. Wanted to let you all know that that Super Punch-Out blindfolded race is still a little bit away from being met. Need $5,000 to make that uh, challenge get met, and right now we're sitting at just under 3,000, so let's get those donations in. We definitely still have time to make that happen. A few more donations came in at the end of that run, though. $20 from Zaxo said, this Shovel Knight run is insane. Can't wait for the new game and see how people destroy that, too. If $25 from Annoying Flowers says, my favorite game on my favorite gaming event promoting one of my favorite charities, could not donate. Amazing run so far, you got this. $9 donation from R30 Hedron says, best of luck to Rock's Tomb and Rhino G in the Dead Cells Any Percent race. Hype. That race is getting set up for you just now. We'll be seeing that shortly. But first, we got to hear from Care Bear 25 who donated $50.25, saying, super excited to be sitting in the first row of GDQX with my friend Ben. Shout out to my wife Carly for staying home and watching our kids so I could attend this event. In-person hype. Another $100 from RJB178 says, for shovelry. $10 donation from Kifa, who says, thank you. But no, thank you for your donation. Good morning, everyone. My name is Liz Starr, and I'll be your host for the next few runs. I just want to let you all know what we're doing here today. We're here to raise money for able gamers. There are millions of people with disabilities who can't play video games without expensive specialized equipment. The Able Gamers charity helps gamers with disabilities by providing that equipment free of charge. Their mission is to create opportunities that enable play in order to combat social isolation, foster inclusive communities, and improve the quality of life for people with disabilities. Thank you all so much for your donations. Uh, if you want something to donate towards, the Super Punch-Out Blindfolded race is about 2,000 away. That's Zallard versus Hootie. You definitely don't want to miss it. Speaking of donations, let me read some of yours here. We have $20 from Crow of Murder 15. Can't wait for the Dead Cells run. It has quickly become my favorite roguelike game of the past year. Also, huge shout out to all the runners and everyone behind the scenes making this amazing event possible for a great cause. Game on. Thank you so much.
it's pretty early in the morning and a lot of us had to wake up around five. So we're getting set up here for the Dead Cells run. Just give us a few minutes. We have $25 from Velox129. No message, but sometimes no message is metaphorical. You send a great message with that donation. Thank you. We have a nice $100 donation by Jino. Here's to making this Pokemon run show what my mom sees when she plays Pokemon. Pikachu everywhere. Are you kids playing that Pikachu game in there? $5 by Genpo. Great runs, great charity, great host. Had to donate now. Hi, Liz. Hello. We have $20 from Myth Child with no message. Thank you so much. And we have $15 from Pesset. I believe that's how you pronounce that. With a blindfolded punch out. Let's go. And again, that will be very soon in just an hour. So be sure to get those donations in.
across. We have $25 from Knock FA. All the luck in the world from my boy Rock. Good luck in the race. And then a little heart. Aw. We have a nice eleven hundred and one dollars, or one hundred and eleven dollars from Odd Craig X with no message. Thank you so much. All right, friends, give it up 